Good evening. With the Ghana Learning Channel's News in Capsule for Friday, November 5, 2021, I am Kingsley Bryan. Here's a look at some of the top stories we will be covering this evening. We'll tell you a QC girl and a QC boy top C second Cape respectively, and Guyana tops Caribbean in 20 subjects at C sec 2021. Then, the African Caribbean Chamber is pleased with current relations as Ghanaian delegation renders help with local content. Then, Arakaka gets $15 million generator grid. Residents assured of reliable and improved power supply. And in news from the region, we'll tell you that Paho records decline in infections and deaths. Eighth consecutive week that overall cases have declined in the region. And on the international scene, Pfizer says experimental COVID pill is 89% effective. It cuts risk of hospitalization and death in the vulnerable. And now for the news in detail. Serena Razak, a Queen's College student, secured the most grade one passes at this year's Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. Razak scored 19 grade one passes, two grade two passes, and one grade three pass. The announcement was made by Minister of Education Priya Manikchand on Friday at the National Center for Educational Research and Development. Answered. Minister Manikchand also warned that some students' grades may be subject to change as CXC is still in the process of conducting a review. Chief Education Officer Dr. Marcel Hudson in his report noted that some 9,808 candidates wrote the CSEC examination from secondary schools and private centers across Guyana. Some 75% of Guyanese students, he said, recorded grade 1 to 3 passes. This is higher than the regional average of 66%. At an earlier announcement of the region's results, it was noted that Guyanese students topped 20 of the 33 subjects written at the CSEC level. Daniel Rupchand, a Queen's College student, is among the top performers at this year's Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination, CAPE. Rup Chand attained 10 grade 1 passes and 1 grade 2 pass. Other top performers include Queen's College student Samuel Haynes, who scored 9 grade 1 passes, and Biddish Passad, another Queen's College student who scored 8 grade 1 passes and 1 grade 2 pass. The overall pass rate for CAPE this year was 90.86%. Improved performance was evident in 4 subjects and remained constant in 6 subjects. Outstanding performances were noted in 8 subjects where 90% and over gained acceptable grades, that is, grade 1 to 3. Some subjects with outstanding performances were Agricultural Science, double award, with 93.14%, Information Technology, with 92.59%, Physical Education and Sports, with 99.28%, and Theatre Arts, with 100%. The 15 examination centers for CAPE were Region 10, Mackenzie High School, Christianburg Wisma Secondary, Region 6, the Burbies High School, and the New Amsterdam Secondary. In Region 4, President's College, Region 3, Saraswati Vijay Nikitan, and Georgetown, the Bishop's High School, Queen's College, St. Joseph's High, St. Rose's High, St. Stanislaus College, Marion Academy, Education Association, and Chase's Academy. We'll tell you now that the African Caribbean Chamber of Trade, Commerce and Industry, a body focused on improving trade between Africa and the Caribbean region, with its headquarters in Georgetown, Guyana, in a statement noted that it welcomes the expansion of relations between Guyana and the world's second largest and second most populous continent. The team is currently in Guyana to offer assistance in finalizing the country's local content policy, an engagement that saw a comparison between Guyana's draft bill with legislation from Ghana as well as Nigeria. The African Caribbean Chamber of Trade, Commerce and Industry welcomes the team and reiterates the enormous opportunities to improve trade between Guyana and the wider Caribbean with countries on the African continent.
The chamber would also like to equally commend the President of Ghana, Nana Okufu Addo, for his commitments towards working with Guyana and the Caribbean region. The framework for exchanges between Guyana and Nigeria is already established through the Directorate of Technical and Core, a framework for the exchange of resources, technology and knowledge between Nigeria and countries of the Africas, Caribbean and Pacific countries. Persons residing in Arakaka village in Region 1 are anticipating less electricity woes as the village was provided with a $15 million generator grid seeking to boost the village's economy and overall standard of living for residents. On Wednesday last, while spearheading the government's ongoing flood relief efforts in Arakaka village, Agriculture Minister Zulfika Mustafa commissioned the generator grid citing the government's continued efforts to modernize the country. Minister Zulfika noted that the $15 million was allocated for that grid, so the people in Arakaka can now have reliable and regular electricity. This will also help to boost the agriculture sector, because it is currently looking at the feasibility of building agro-processing facilities in these parts of the country. With the establishment of such a system, agro-processing facilities will be able to operate effectively. Regional Chairman Brent Ashley remarked that the grid has an output capacity of 250 kilovolt amperes that will provide stable electricity to the entire village. The grid is already up, awaiting connections to the homes of each resident, which the team is expecting to complete before Christmas. He explained that the regional officials are currently working to determine the number of hours per day that the generator will be operable. Arakaka is located along the left bank of the Barima River and is home to some 500 residents. And turn our attention to the world of sports. Defending champions West Indies have been knocked out of the men's T20 World Cup after a 20-run defeat by already eliminated Sri Lanka in Abu Dhabi. Chasing 190 to win, West Indies finished on 169 for 8, with Shimron Etemeyer top scoring with 81 not out, and the three bowlers taking two wickets apiece. Earlier, Sri Lanka made 189 for 3, with Charit Asalanka making 68 from 41 balls and Patam Nisanaka 51. It leaves England, Australia and South Africa fighting to progress in Group 1. Australia beat Bangladesh by 8 wickets in Thursday's first game to move into second spot. They will likely qualify if they beat West Indies on Saturday, but South Africa could progress if they beat England and overtake Australia on net run rate. England can still be eliminated, but it would take a massive defeat for that to happen. And that story was extracted and modified from the newsroom. And in news from the region, Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, member countries, including several Caribbean states, have been recording declines in coronavirus infections and deaths. Assistant Director Dr. Harbas Barbosa da Silva Jr. said that more than 725,000 new infections and just over 18,000 deaths were reported across North and Latin America and the Caribbean during the last week. Open quote, this is the eighth consecutive week that overall cases have declined in the region. End of quote. He informed during PAHO's weekly COVID-19 digital media briefing on Wednesday, November 3. Dr. Barbosa indicated that in addition to the fall in infections and deaths, Canada and the United States of America recorded notable decreases in hospitalizations. Additionally, he said that similar declines have been occurring across most of Central America, noting that following weeks of persistent outbreaks in Belize, that nation recorded a nearly 20% decrease in confirmed cases and 60% reduction in deaths. Dr. Barbosa further advised that the same trends are present in much of South America, save for a few exceptions that have been under monitoring, while adding that cases and deaths are falling or remaining stable throughout a significant portion of the Caribbean. He pointed out, however, that Barbados continues to report its highest numbers of COVID-related infections and deaths since the start of the pandemic, and there are concerning shortages of hospital capacity in the Dominican Republic and Trinidad and Tobago. The pandemic is still with us, he said. We cannot fall into a false sense of security that the COVID-19 pandemic is over. 
It is critical for all of us to stay the course until everyone is vaccinated and protected from the virus, Dr. Barbosa emphasized. And that was extracted and modified from Loop Caribbean News. And on the international scene, an experimental pill to treat COVID-19 developed by the U.S. company Pfizer cuts the risk of hospitalization or death by 89% in vulnerable adults, clinical trial results suggest. The drug Paxlovid is intended for use soon after symptoms develop in people at high risk of severe disease. It comes a day after the UK medicines regulator approved a similar treatment for Mark Sharp and Dome, MSD. Pfizer says it stopped early trials as the initial results were so positive. The UK has already ordered 250,000 courses of the new Pfizer treatment, along with another 480,000 courses of MSD's Moen New Prevapir pill. Health and Social Care Secretary Sajid Javid called the results incredible and said the UK's medicine regulators would now assess its safety and effectiveness. If approved, this could be another significant weapon in the armory to fight the virus alongside with the vaccines and other treatments. The Pfizer drug, known as a protease inhibitor, is designed to block an enzyme the virus needs in order to multiply. When taken alongside a low dose of another antiviral pill called retinavir, it stays in the body for longer. Three pills are taken twice a day for five days. And that's what was extracted and modified from the BBC. And that's our news broadcast for Friday, November 5, 2021. Please join us for our rebroadcast tomorrow morning. On behalf of myself and technical teams, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned to our regular programming. And remember to observe all the necessary precautionary methods to fight off COVID-19. We're all in this together. Have a safe weekend. Thank you.